Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to start a brand new unit. This unit is called transformations. A transformation, if you recall, is when you can take an image, or we call a pre-image, and we map it onto a new image. In this mapping, we can change the size, the position, the orientation, right, of the figure, or a combination of those things. So what we're going to be talking about in this unit is how to rotate a, an image on a graph, how to reflect it, how to do a composition of, of things, even a dilation, look at its symmetry, all kinds of things. That's what this unit is about. But let's begin with just reflection. This video is going to be discussing mostly reflections. As you can see in this image, we have the pre-image. and the image. The before and the after. You can tell by the symbol because the original image or the pre-image has basic capital letters A, B, and C. And when it's reflected, the new image or the reflected image will have A prime, B prime, and C prime. That denotes that it's going through one transformation. If it goes through a series of reflections, you can add a double prime, B double prime, C double prime, or triple prime if you want to do three or four more reflections on top of that. So let's talk about the rules of reflections. Let's talk about this notation and let's get right into it. As you can see here, we're trying to reflect this image, triangle FGH, across the x-axis. What does that mean? It means that we're going to flip the image across this line. So as you can tell, point H is below the line. I'm going to make this in a different color. Point H is two spaces below the line, which means when we reflect point H, it'll flip to the other side the equal amount. If you're two below, we're going to go two above for point H. Same thing with F and same thing with G. As you can see, F is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces above the line. So when you reflect it, you're going to go 5 spaces below. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is going to be considered F prime, H prime, and G prime is 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces above. So when you reflect it onto the other side, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces below G prime. And you can connect this figure so you can see how the reflected image See what it looks like when it's flipped across the x-axis. So these new points are going to be, let's see, f is originally negative 3, 5. Now it's going to be negative 3, negative 5. g starts at negative 1, 4. And when we reflect it, it'll stay as negative 1, negative 4. And then the h value goes from being negative 2, negative 2, to negative 2, positive 2. Now, for every one of these graphs, every one of these transformations, we should be able to go on the graph and see how it's directly affected on the graph. You can also create a rule that helps you remember what is actually happening. Let's compare these two to identify the rule. Look at the original point and then look at the f prime, g prime, and h prime. Let's compare these two points. What is it that you notice that changed? When we flipped it over the x-axis, the x value stayed the same. Negative 3 remained as negative 3. Negative 1 remained negative 1. Negative 2 remained negative 2. The thing that did change, as you can tell, is the y value. Because it got flipped over the x-axis, the y value will now change to its opposite. Positive 4 became negative 4. And negative 2 flipped over to the top as a positive number. So if we were to create a rule, I would say that the x value remains the same, but the y value is not going to become the opposite. If it's a positive number, y becomes negative. If it's a negative number, well, the negative of a negative number becomes positive. So you can use this rule, you can use the graph, or you can use these two notations to be able to figure out what the what the location is of the transformation. 
What happens when we reflect an image over the y-axis? Now we want to reflect it across this line. As you can see, point A and point D are on the left of the y-axis. When we flip it over, it'll land on the opposite side of the y-axis. So if we are three spaces to the left for A, we're going to go three spaces to the right for A prime. Notice how A prime is now located at 3 comma 1. If I look at D, we are two spaces from the y-axis. So we're going to go two spaces to the other side. So d prime will be located at 2, negative 2. Point b, we are three spaces away from the y-axis. We're going to go three spaces on the opposite side. This is b prime. So now it's on the negative 3, positive 3. And if we look at c prime, C is two spaces from the y-axis, so we're going to go two spaces to the opposite side, and C prime will land at negative 2, negative 1. As you can see by the graph, we can connect the points. What is it that you notice about the values? What is it that changed when we flipped it over the y-axis? If I compare these and I create a rule about it, notice how it's the x value that changed. The y value stayed the same, but the x flipped to the other side because we're reflecting over the y-axis. So we're reflecting it over the y-axis, y remains the same, it's the x that changes. So, if I were to make a rule, I would call this, let's see, I would say x becomes the opposite and y remains the same. That's the rule that would, I would create. So, you take a value, for example. Let's apply this to the rule. If I have negative 3, 1, and I'm going to make it the opposite of x and ch keep y the same, I would consider this as the opposite of x, and y stays the same. That's what these two represent. Notice how the opposite of negative 3 becomes positive 3. And if y stays the same, if it's positive 1, I'll just keep it as a 1. And I can go through that with all the other points. The negative of a negative turns into a positive. That's why it's the opposite of x. And the y remains the same. We don't change it at all. What happens if we reflect the line over the line y equals x? Well, y equals x is actually a the parent function of a line. If we look at y equals mx plus b, here the slope is just 1, and the y-intercept is 0. So we really have a point that starts here at 0, 0, and go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, we're really trying to reflect it across this line. I'm going to make it a dotted line. This is going to be the mirror, the reflection. Now, I'm going to first plot the original image, and I'm going to use that as the reflection. Triangle DEF is located at negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, positive 3, and 3, negative 1. So this is D, E, and F. Now, if this dotted line, the y equals x, is my mirror, or the line of reflection, F is going to have to be on the other side. This point will have to be somewhere over here. And D will have to be on this other side, while E is on this other side. Everything flips across the diagonal. Now, the way I like to think about this is that whenever I look at myself in a mirror, pretend that you're looking at yourself in a mirror, and if you can, maybe you can use your phone right now. Open your phone, go to the camera, raise your right hand if you're looking at the selfie mode. 
When you raise your right hand, the person you're looking at on the phone or on the mirror is raising which hand? The person is raising their left hand. Their left is your right. And if you raise your left hand, the person you're seeing on the mirror is raising their right hand. So notice how the left becomes right and the right becomes left. And that's exactly what happens here with when you're reflecting it across the Y equals X line. If you look at these points, if I start out with these points, here I have 3 comma negative 1. When I flip it over to the other side, I'm going to end up having the switch. The Y becomes X and the X becomes Y because y equals x, and x equals y. So point F Let's see if I'm graphing this correctly. I didn't label these correctly for here on the graph. This is D, this is E, this is F. If I label these points, D is negative 2, negative 1. When I switch these, I'm going to have now as my d prime negative 1 comma negative 2 because y becomes x and x becomes y. When I look at point E, E is located at negative 1 positive 3. And when I switch these two, I'm going to end up having for E prime 3 comma negative 1. And F, as I switch it, I'm going to have for F prime, I have negative 1 comma 3. I'm going to plot these points so you can see how they land on the exact opposite side. D prime is negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2. This is D prime. Notice how it's directly on the opposite side of that. If I look at E, it's 3, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 1. Now this is point E prime. And f prime is negative 1, positive 3. f prime, notice how this graph becomes flipped across the y equals x line. So if I were to create a rule about this, my rule would be quite simple. y comma x. Normally we have x, y, so when I switch the values, I'm going to say switch x and y. That's my rule for when you reflect it across the y equals x line. Now for our last reflection, what would you say if you're trying to reflect it across the y equals negative x line? So instead of having a positive slope, now we're going to graph it or reflect it across negative x. If I flip it over to this side, how does the rule change? Well, let's go ahead and start with the plotting of our points. Let's plot our original points. Here I have points A, B, C, and D. A is 1, 4. B is 3, 2. C is 2, negative 2. And D is negative 3, 1. As I connect these, I can see that I have myself bit of a trapezoid kind of look. I'm not sure if it's a trapezoid because these two lines are not parallel, but it does look some sort of quadrilateral. Now when I reflect these, now I have to flip it across the other side. Notice how this point will have to be over here. C, since it's on the line, it'll stay on the line, right? The way to think about that is when you put your finger on the mirror, your finger on the mirror will stay on the mirror because it's directly reflected on the mirror because it's on the mirror. Your face, since it's further away from the mirror, is going to be on the opposite side of the mirror. This point B will be on the other side and point A will be on the other side as well. So this image is going to flip on across the y equals negative x. So what happens here? Well, when we reflect it across y equals x, we said we're going to switch x and y. That was a rule earlier. But this is reflected across y equals negative x instead of y equals x. So what changes is the negative, which means we're going to make both of these 
negative. We're going to multiply the values by a negative number, negative 1, and then we're going to switch them. Or switch them and multiply by a negative 1. Whatever works. So let's give it a try. Here I'm going to switch these two values for a prime. I'm going to put 4 comma 1. I switch these. And then I'm going to multiply both by a negative. Notice how negative 4, negative 1 would be at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. This is a prime. b prime, when I switch it, I get negative 2, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. This is b prime. Does this line look like it's directly opposite of this line? Yeah. If you look at c prime, we're going to switch these and we're going to do the opposite. We're going to multiply both by a negative. So I'm going to switch the values first. Once I switch, I'm then going to multiply by a negative 1. So this becomes a positive 2 and this becomes a negative 2. When you multiply by negative, negative times a negative turns into a positive, And the positive becomes a negative. Notice how 2 negative 2 remains here. C prime does not change because it's on the mirror. It's on the line. And then D prime, when I switch these, I switch the values. Sorry. I'm going to start by just switching them. 1 comma negative 3. And then I'm going to multiply both of them by a negative 1. This one turns into a negative, and this one turns into a positive. So negative 1, 3 is the location of D prime. And here I have my graph. The image got flipped across the y equals negative x. Think of reflections as what happens when you look into a mirror. Right? How do things change? What is being affected by it? So as a recap, here we have a few of rules if you want to look at what we just discussed. Right? On the words, when we're reflecting over the x-axis, we're going to multiply the y-coordinate by a negative. So the x stays the same, and it's the y that becomes negative. Right? Multiply y by a negative 1, and that's how you get times negative y. You can also think of this as x stays the same, and then y is opposite. So if it's a positive, it changes to a negative. If it's a negative, it changes to the positive. When you reflect it over the y-axis, you're going to multiply the x value by a negative 1. So it's the x that's going to change. The y stays the same. So opposite of x. y stays the same. When you reflect it over the y equals x, we're just going to switch x and y. So y comma x. It doesn't matter if it's positive or if it's negative. All you're going to do is swap the values. The x becomes y and the y becomes x because y equals x is the mirror. It's the line of reflection. And then what happens when we switch it over y equals negative x? We're going to switch the values, but then we're going to do the opposite of y and the opposite of x. So switch x and y to get y comma x. Then you do the opposite of y and opposite of x. And that turns into negative y, negative x. All right, guys, I hope this has helped. Please let us know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, we'll calculate it.